Hello there! I hope you're having an amazing day! So, are we ready to start learning basic commands for working with cargo? I thought so, let's get right into it! To get warmed up, let's get started by covering some basic cargo command types. The first thing that we need to cover is a basic categorization of commands based on what they're used for. Do not worry, of course, first we are going to just talk about different categories and some most common commands for them, and after that we are going to use them in practice. We are going to start things off with general commands. So, general commands are used to get us some additional information about our project or cargo in general. The second category are build commands. And, you guessed it, they're used for building our project and for running it and for checking our code if it's valid or not, if it has any errors and stuff like that. So basically that's what build commands do. The next set of commands are manifest commands. These ones are basically wrapped around our dependencies inside of our project. And because of that, they're also very tightly coupled with cargo.toml and cargo.log files. You still do not know what those files are and what they're used for, but do not worry about it because we're going to cover them in depth in our next video, so you'll have the understanding right after that. After that, we have package commands. And as their name suggests, they're basically used for working with packages of our project. Yeah, you do not have to worry about them, we're not going to cover them in depth because they're a bit more advanced and we'll cover them in some future videos, so you do not have to worry about them, you just have an idea about, about what they're used for. And finally, we have publishing commands. And again, the name is very self-explanatory, so publishing commands are used for publishing our project. Just a disclaimer here, as I already mentioned, we're not going to cover manifest, publishing and package command categories in this video, because they're a bit more advanced and I think that you will not use them that often. If you need them, you can always Google them and you'll find the solution you need for sure. So yeah. So what we are left with is general commands and build commands. So those two we are going to cover a bit in depth. Let's get started with general commands. So in this category we have only two commands and they're very basic ones and you will definitely want to remember them. The first command we are going to cover from general category is going to be cargo help. And this one is probably the most essential command you want to remember, because you will use it every single time you feel lost, and when you do not know which command you basically need or how to invoke it. So when you invoke it, you will get a list of all the common cargo commands. Also, when you have found the command you want to use, but you still do not know how to invoke it properly with proper parameters and flags, you can use cargo help and then add the name of the command you want to use. If you, for example, want an explanation how to properly invoke cargo build, you just run cargo help build and you will get a list of all the potential parameters, flags, and explanations how to properly invoke it and get the desired result. Awesome job there! Now you know how to ask for help from Cargo itself. And the second general command is Cargo version. And when you invoke this command, you will get a version of your Cargo installed. Basically, you will get a version of the Cargo package manager tool that is installed on your computer. This might not seem like a very beneficial thing, but when you think about it, it actually is, because sometimes you want to make sure that the versions you are using are all compliant, and also if you run cargo version and you do not have cargo installed, you will see that it's actually not installed. So yeah, that's the second command here. Well, alrighty then, now we just need to show it in practice. Let's jump right into Visual Studio Code. Okay, now that we are in our Visual Studio Code, the first thing that we need to do is to open our terminal. And to do that, you're going to press Control tilde. 
tilde is the button under escape button, just so you know. And when you have pressed it and opened your terminal, it's time to get started. Now that we have our terminal open and ready, it's time to test our newly acquired knowledge. First, cargo help. Let's run this command and see what happens. As you can see, we got a bunch of stuff happening on our screen. It's not that difficult to navigate. You can see a bunch of commonly used commands and some flags to go with them. And that's basically everything there is to it. Now let's use cargo help for a specific command. And we're going to use it on some command that we are going to use a lot. For example, cargo build. In order to see the information about cargo build command, we're going to run cargo help and build. And as you can see, we got so many things on our screen. It's like endless scroll. But this is all you can find about the command and you can see everything there is to it. All the options, different possibilities and everything you might ever need from it. And yeah, that's it. That's all about cargo help command. Now we have cargo version command. Let's not wait any further and let's run it immediately. And when we execute the command, this is what we get. We get a version of our cargo installed on our computer. If you do not have it installed, you will get an error stating that cargo is an unknown command. And voila, we have covered all the cargo general commands in practice. Great job there. We covered all the general commands. Now it's time to start talking about build commands. So the first one on our list is going to be cargo build. And what this command does is, yeah, it builds our project. <laughs> so what does that mean is basically it creates executables for our project. But before generating them, it's going to check our project for errors, both syntactical and semantical. And yeah, that's basically it. Then we have cargo run command. And this one does everything that cargo build does, but also it executes the executable. So basically it will check for errors, it will build an executable and it will also run it. After we have covered those two, we also have cargo check command. This one is a bit different from the previous two because it will not build an executable. It will just check for errors and see if everything is okay. So if you remember our story from the previous video about compilers, this command here is just going to do the validation of our code and check it for both syntactical and semantical errors. Then we have cargo test command and this one is used for running our tests. Rust has an amazing support for testing because it only has a single attribute which you add to your function calls and it will know that it's basically a test it's looking at and it will not build that code into our executables. But when you run cargo test, then it will run all the functions that have test attribute added to them. We are still not done here. We also have cargo fetch command. And this one is used to fetch all the dependencies that were specified in cargo TAML file. Again, do not trouble yourself with cargo TAML. We're going to talk about it in our next video. Right after that, we have cargo doc command. And this one is generating documentation for our entire project for us. Yes, you heard right. Rust has a default automated documentation generation tool. That was a mouthful, definitely. And finally, we have cargo clean command. And this one is used to remove all of our artifacts from project. P.S. Artifacts are projects executable files. So basically, after running cargo clean command, you will be left without all the executables that were created by running cargo build or cargo run commands. Awesome job there! We managed to cover all the basic build commands. So right now we need to jump right into Visual Studio Code and test them in action. Okay, brace yourselves because we have a bunch of stuff to cover here. But in order to be efficient and not take too long, we are going to try to be quick about every command. The first one is going to be build command. 
As you already know, we have our well-known Hello World project, and we're going to use it here as well. As you can see, we already have a target folder, and inside of it, we have already some executable files. That's because I was running cargo build before. But in order to show you what is going to happen when we run cargo build command, I need to remove it. And to do that, if you remember from our previous discussion, we are going to use cargo clean command. Let's run it and see what happens. Awesome job! Now, we no longer have our target folder, so when we invoke the cargo build command, we are going to see exactly what is going to happen. So, let's do it! Okay, as you can see, after running cargo build command, our target folder has appeared again, and inside of it, we can see all the executable files again. Which is awesome, which is what we expected to happen. The only thing we can see in our terminal is the fact that everything was finished and successful, which is why everything is so green. It's time again to run cargo clean command, so we would remove the target folder and see what is actually going to happen after running cargo run command. Let's do it! And as you can see, our targets folder is again visible, and inside of it we have all of our artifacts, which means that everything was done properly, but there is a slight difference. As you can see in our terminal, we do not just have the finished and everything was green stuff, but also under it, we have a printed hello world message, which is exactly the same text that was printed in our code, which means that our code was actually executed after the executables were created, which is exactly what we wanted to achieve here, right? Okay target folder gone, let's see what's going to happen when we run cargo check command. As you can see, after running it, target folder has appeared again. Yeah, but I said the executables are not going to be created. Let's investigate this a bit better. When we open the target folder, you can see that we no longer have executable files inside of it, which means that compiler was doing its job, it did something but we do not have executables. The code was not optimized and it was not translated to machine code and no executable files were created for us, which is exactly what we expected to happen. Another nice job done. And finally, let's discuss cargo test, cargo dock and cargo fetch. These instructions are not going to be covered right now because it would require for us to extend our project quite a bit and that would include a lot of unknown functionalities being added to it and I do not want to do that right now. You will see as we progress throughout our discussions and our future videos, but right now I do not think it's going to be so beneficial. Now back to our talk. The mission was successful here. Whew! That was a lot of talking about basic build commands, but at least now we know how to build our executables, how to test our code, how to create documentation, and so many different things, which is great. I hope it was worth the trouble for you. Okay, this video is getting very lengthy and I do not want to torture you any longer, so I think it might be a good idea to make a cut here and continue our discussion about cargo in our next video. In the next video, we are going to talk about creating a new project using cargo. We are also going to cover cargo.taml and cargo.lock files, as promised. And finally, we are going to discuss how you can include more than a single executable file inside of your project. So there is only one thing left, and that is to wish you an amazing day. And I hope I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.